Hello, welcome to Meeple Care. My name is Nicolaas and today I would like to show you how to set up and play Babylon. Babylon is a game for 2 to 4 players, ages 8 and up, that plays in about 40 to 60 minutes. The game is designed by Olivier Grégoire and is published by Geek Attitude Games. Now before we head back to ancient Babylon, I would kindly ask you to hit the like and subscribe button. Welcome to Babylon. It's 600 BC and you find yourself at the royal court where the king of Babylon wants to honor his young wife with a magnificent garden full of beautiful scented flowers. And since he can't do this himself, he is looking for skilled architects and especially for the architects who can fulfill his vision and will help him to create what will become one of the seven wonders of the ancient world the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. During the game, you will excavate the quarry for the best building materials and use them wisely to build the different terrace levels of your garden. Once you have built a terrace, you might get the opportunity to build bridges, making a connection to other terrace tiles, or build stairways, connecting lower levels with higher levels. And you can even build statues to honor the king. And of course, you want to have a variety of flowers in your garden and some fountains. At the end of the game you will score points for your garden and the architect with the most astonishing garden and of course the most points will earn the title of the greatest architect in the kingdom. Now let's start by setting up the game. Place the game box in the center of the table. The box will function as your supply and your query. Along the edges of the box, there's a room to create a supply of all the building pieces. Sort out these pieces so each type has its own place in the box. You will have a large supply of single and double pillars, but you will also have room to keep your bridges, your fountains, stairways, statues and belvederes. Next, you can set up the quarry in the middle of the box. To do this, you will use terrace tiles. Now, before we start building the quarry, it might be a good idea to take a closer look at these terrace tiles. These are the terrace tiles. Each tile has a material side and a garden side. The exception to the rule are these starting tiles. These four tiles don't have a material side, but show you one of the four types of flower that you can have in your garden. Place these tiles off to the side for now. The three types of materials are clay, granite and basalt. The clay tiles have two symbols on them, the granite tree and the basalt four. Here you see the four types of flowers that you can find on the other side of the material side. It's already worth noting that the flower symbol and the decorative symbols on the material side match with the flower and the decorative symbols on the garden side. To start building the quarry, you take all the basalt terrain tiles, give them a good shuffle and place them randomly material side face up on the bottom of the quarry. Do the same for the 16 granite tiles and place those on top of the basalt tiles. Last up are the clay tiles. Finish by building the quarry by placing these on top of the granite tiles. Remember those starting tiles? Now each player is handed a player board and takes the matching starting tile. Place that tile with the garden side face up in the matching slot of your board. These are the round tokens. Shuffle these tokens face down and place them in a stack on the game end token. You use 10 round tokens for a 4 player game, 12 for a 3 player game and 14 for a 2 player game. Choose a starting player and place this stack in front of the player to the right of the starting player. That will be the player who is last in turn order. During this last step of setup, you will adjust the quarry to the number of players. Starting with the starting player and following in a clockwise direction, each player now removes clay tiles from the quarry. 
In a three player game, each player removes one tile of their choice. But in a two player game, each player will, in turn order, first remove one tile and then another tile, so six in total. With setup finished, let's take a look at how the game is played. Like you saw during setup, Babylon is played over a fixed number of rounds depending on the player count. During a round, each player takes a turn in clockwise order, starting with the starting player. On your turn, you must first perform a digging action, where you will choose a terrace tile to take from the quarry. Depending on the tile that you take, this will also provide you with these pillars, that you will use to build your terrace tile. Then you may perform a building action, building the terrace tile that you just took, the terrace tile in your storage area, or both. After that, you must store and discard any unused pillars or terrace tiles to end your turn. When the last player in turn order finishes his turn, he will flip a round token. These tokens can show you a special effect for the next turn. After the final round, players will count their points to determine the winner. But first, let's start by digging for some materials. When you perform the dig action, you can take any visible terrace tile from the quarry. A tile is considered to be visible when it's not covered by another tile. When you take a tile, you also get an amount of single pillars, depending on the position of that tile in the quarry. You get one single pillar for each of that tile's edges that is bordering one visible tile on the same level or lower. For instance, this clay tile, if I take this tile, these three edges share a border with a tile at the same level and one at a lower level. So taking this tile would give me four single pillars. You also get one single pillar for each of that tile's edge that is bordering the edge of the quarry. So taking this tile would give me one, two, three single pillars because these three edges are bordering a tile with the same level. And I would also get a single pillar because this tile's edge is bordering the edge of the quarry. When the edge of the tile you take is bordering the bottom of the quarry, you also get a single pillar. So here I would get one, two, three, four single pillars. And finally, if the terrace tile that you take has the same flower symbol as the symbol on your starting player board, you would also take one extra single pillar. So if I am the blue player and I want to take this clay tile, this would also give me one, two, three, four, and since I'm the blue player, five single pillars. The only time that you don't get a pillar is if that terrace tile's edges border a tile that's higher than the tile you are excavating. So in the case of this basil tile, I would only gain a single pillar for the edge that's bordering the bottom of the quarry and the edge that's bordering the sides of the quarry. I'm the player with the white flower symbol and I will take this tile, this clay tile with the white flower, because this will give me one, two, three, four single pillars, and I will gain an extra single pillar because I am taking a tile with my player color. So I would take the tile, and along with it, I would take five single pillars. Now that we have a tile that we can place, we can start by building our garden. When building, you can choose to build the terrace tile that you just took, the tile from the slot in your player board, or both. Let's take a look at your player board and some building rules. Your player board consists of two areas. This is the building area, and this is the storage area. You already know this area, because this is where you will place your starting tile, and later during the game, you will be able to store a terrace tile here. Underneath the storage area, there are six spaces to store single pillars, but more on that later. The largest space of your player board is the building area. You will place pillars in these notches to start building your garden. The building action is an optional action, but since your garden is still empty, I better show you how you will build a terrace tile. Before you can place a terrace tile, you have to place some pillars. You can't build a terrace tile directly onto your player board. You can place a pillar in an empty notch on your player board, 
or on one of the four spaces on a terrace tile that you previously placed with or without a symbol. A terrace tile must always be placed garden side up on three or four pillars. If you only use three pillars, you must immediately place a belvedere piece, that's this piece, on the corner of the tile that's not resting on a pillar. The belvedere will never be able to support a terrace tile on a higher level, since it's placed on a weak spot in your garden. As soon as you have built your first terrace tiles, you might want to build tiles on a higher level. To do this, you will need these double pillars. At any time during your turn, you may swap two single pillars for one double pillar. However, a double pillar cannot be swapped for two single pillars. It's my turn again and I have acquired this terrace tile, these two double pillars and these two single pillars. I can now start by first placing these two single pillars on the terrace tile that I previously built. And I can use these two double pillars and place them in the notches adjacent to the terrace tile. I now have a new building spot for this terrace tile so I can place it on top of these pillars and it's now on a level 2. Remember, no matter how high you build, you can always rest a terrace tile on only three pillars. So I could remove the double pillar and rest the terrace tile on only three pillars. Again, I would have to add this belvedere piece on the corner that is not supported. When you build a terrace tile on the second level, it is not allowed to completely cover a previously built terrace on the first level. So when you build a terrace tile on level 2, it will either partially cover up one or two spaces of an existing level 1 tile, or it can be placed on three or four double pillars. And of course you can also build a terrace tile on the second level by partially covering up two terrace tiles on the first level. You have to build your garden one level at a time. You may only place a terrace tile on the third level if you already have a tile on the second level, even if they are far apart. In a minute I will show you how to place decorations in your garden, but I will already show you this decoration. It's a statue. When you have placed a statue on a tile, you are allowed to use it during a later turn to build a new terrace tile. At that moment, however, it is no longer considered to be a statue. It's very important to know that all pillars that you place during your turn must be covered by a terrace tile. Pillars that can't be covered up will be placed in your storage area at the end of your turn. After placing a tile in your garden, you check if you can build one or more decorative items. Taking a decorative item is free. But when you place them, they must be placed either entirely or partially on at least one tile that you just placed. These items must be placed on empty spaces with the matching symbol and they can never be diagonal. Let me show you the four decorative items and how you can and may place them on your tiles. First up is the stairway. It has this symbol on the terrace tiles. A stairway must connect two stairway symbols directly adjacent to each other on two tiles that are separated by one level. These two tiles can overlap each other or they can be next to each other. The fountain allows you to connect two fountain symbols directly adjacent to each other on two tiles on the same level. A bridge connects two bridge symbols situated directly opposite of each other on two tiles on the same level separated by an empty space. The last decorative item is one that you already saw during the building action. That's this statue. And this is the symbol for a statue. Imagine that I just placed this tile and add a stairway. I'm also allowed to cover up this statue symbol with this statue. 
you can place your first statue on any tile that you just placed. If, however, you place a second or third or more statues, there's a rule that you need to follow. To show you how this works, I have already placed a number of pillars on my player board so I can easily show you what happens each time that I add a new tile with one of those statue symbols. For example, I just placed these pillars and I'm now adding this terrace tile. You notice that there's a statue symbol here, but the rule says that if I want to place a new statue, I have to be able to draw a straight line to a previously placed statue. Here, that's not the case. If, however, I tilt this tile and turn it this way, I now have a straight line, so I am allowed to place a statue on this spot. The line you draw can cover any distance or any difference between levels. So, placing a new tile on a level 1, I am allowed to place my statue here on this level 1 spot, because I can draw a straight line between the previously placed statue. Placing this tile during my turn, I would not be allowed to place a statue on this corner, because as you can see, I am not able to draw a straight line from this statue symbol to my previously placed statues. Of course, I am still allowed to tilt this tile, turn it this way, and now I can connect these two terrace tiles by a bridge. And doing so, I have now lined up these two statues so I can place another statue here. When placing a pillar or a decorative item, you can never use spaces that are hidden by a tile when viewed from above. And it's good to keep in mind while building your garden that any element, item or tile that is partially overbuilt, like here, this fountain, will still be able to score you points. If, however, a tile or an item is completely overbuilt by another tile, when looking from above, you will not be able to score it. After digging and building, your turn has come to an end. And this is the moment where you must storage and discard any single pillars that you did not use during this round. As mentioned before, the storage area only has place for six pillars. You can't store any double pillars. If you did not build the terrace tile that you dug up, you can choose to discard it, or you place it in the storage slot on your board. If there is still a tile there, you can choose to discard that tile and replace it with a new tile. At the end of the round, when the last player in turn order has completed his turn, he will now reveal a round token from the stack. For example, when you reveal this round token, during the next round, each time when you will place a terrace tile, if there is an empty space on that terrace tile, you can pretend that any of the four symbols is on that space. Another example is this one. At the start of the next round, each player gets a free double pillar. The game ends when the last player in turn order has no more tokens to reveal. This means that it's time for the final scoring. The most important thing to remember about the final scoring is that to score your garden, you will look at your garden from above. Each tile or decorative element that is partially or completely visible from above will score you points. So this means I am able to score this fountain even though it's half covered up by this tile. To easily score your garden, you use the scoring sheet and you follow each step. Let's start by looking at our statues. Each statue is worth one victory point multiplied by the level on which it is built. So this would mean that this statue scores me two points, and this one also because they are on level two, so that's four points, and this one on level one scores me one point, so that's five. For the fountains, that's the same rule. You score three points multiplied by the level on which the fountain is built. So this fountain is on level one, that's three points, and this fountain is on level two, so that's six points. So that would score me nine points. The same goes for these bridges. I have one bridge, I can multiply it by the level on which it is built. It's built on a level two. So again, this scores me six points. For the stairs, we look 
at the levels that it is connecting. This stairway is connecting a level 1 tile with a level 2, so that's 3 points. And I also have this stairway that's connecting a level 2 with a level 3, that's 5 points, so 8 in total. Next you score for each set of 4 different decorative items. I have 1, 2, 3 statues, but I only have 2 stairways, 2 fountains and 1 bridge. So I only have 1 complete set of a bridge, a statue, a stairway and a fountain. So this scores me 4 points. Next up are the flowers. Again, you score for a set of four different flower types. I have three blue flowers, three white flowers that are visible from above, but I only have two yellow and two pink flowers. So I have two sets of four different flowers, scoring me eight points. And last, you score one point for each Belvedere, no matter on which level it is built, as long as it's visible. This one is visible, so it scores me one point. And to finish your scoring, you will also score the highest tile, the level of that tile, multiplied by two. I have one tile on a level three, so this would score me six points. The player with the most victory points wins the game. In case of a tie, the player with the largest garden surface is declared the winner. Count the pillar spaces on the player board still visible from above. The one with the fewest wins the game. If there's still a tie, all tied players share the victory. This is all you need to know to set up and play Babylon. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. And if you want to follow MeepleCare, you can do so on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. This was MeepleCare, taking care of your Meeple needs.